my god, oh my god, I can't believe what just happened. The 12th world chess champion Anatoly Karpov just blundered against Magnus Carlsen. Did I just see that right? Karpov, the mastermind, made a mistake. Even Magnus must be thinking, wait, did that really happen? This is a moment for the history books. And honestly, I'm not sure whether to gasp or giggle. So this blunder happened in the year 2009 in the World Blitz Championship. Karpo started the game with d4, knight f6, both of them taking control of the center, c4 taking control of the center, g6 preparing to fianchetto, g3 again with the same idea, bishop g7, bishop g2, both of them have activated their dragons and now d5. Magnus is directly attacking the center. Takes, takes and now attacks. Knight moves and now knight to e2. Simply preparing to castle and now Magnus attacks the center again with c5. Karpov refuses to give up the center so he plays d5. Magnus challenges the center one more time with e6. Both players castle and now the knight moves to c3, guarding both the strong center pawns over here. Since this knight cannot be developed over here, so Magnus develops it on the side of the board. And now Karpov plays a4. But that move just created two holes in white's territory and those holes being the b3 square and the b4 square. Since the holes have been created, Magnus immediately takes advantage of that and moves his not so good knight on the A file to the newly formed hole in white's territory. Now it's controlling a lot of good squares in white's territory. Karpov continues the development with bishop to E3, also attacking the pawn over here. And Magnus here protects and counter-attacks Karpov. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop. And now Karpov cannot make the mistake of capturing this free pawn, otherwise he's losing to a fork attack. Therefore, Karpov here played knight to b5, double attacking the pawn over here. And now Magnus protects the pawn with e5. Magnus is like, I really love this pawn in your territory and I don't want to give it up. So I'm going to do everything in my power to protect this pawn. a5 by Karpov, attacking the knight. And since this knight doesn't have any good squares to go, it cannot come over here. If it comes over here, there's a probability of getting attacked again. And then there aren't any good squares for the knight. So this, no, this, no. This, uh, kind of okay, but it blocks the bishop. Therefore, Magnus thought, I will not move my knight. Let me just counter attack Karpov's knight. So he plays bishop to d7. You take my knight, I take your knight. Karpov is like, my knight is nicely placed in one of the squares of your territory. I don't want to move it from here. So I'm simply going to develop a piece while also protect this knight. And now Magnus had to move his knight to the c8 square. And here Karpov played queen to a8 trying to attack this knight, but also is getting the queen on the same diagonal as this bishop. This knight is now pinned. So what should Magnus play over here? Well, Magnus can just win an extra pawn over here by playing knight captures pawn, pawn captures knight, and now a6, attacking the pinned knight over here. The queen moves and the knight is gone, and Magnus would be up in material by one point. If Karpov continues capturing the pawn, then he loses this pawn. And again, there is a double attack over here. If he captures further, then this is coming. And there is no way Karpov can win back his pawn. So let's go back. Therefore, knight takes pawn was such a great idea to grab a free pawn on the board. But since both the players were playing in a blitz format, Magnus completely missed this golden opportunity and ended up playing knight to a6. Since the knight was under attack, he simply moved over here. But well, that was a loss of opportunity. Karpov activated his rook on the open file. Magnus played knight to d6, putting more pressure on this pinned piece over here. And now queen to b3, just unpinning the knight. Knight takes knight, knight takes knight. And now b6, attacking the pawn. And now Karpov played knight to d6, getting deeper into black's territory and controlling many important squares. Magnus played knight to c5, attacking white's queen. Queen moved to a3. And now queen to f6, attacking the knight over here as well as putting some pressure on the f2 pawn. Knight moved to c4 and now bishop to b5, attacking the knight one more time. And here Karpov played b4. He's like, you are attacking my piece, I'm gonna attack your piece. Knight moved to b7 and now pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. The queen is under attack and Karpov here goes for a very bold decision. He decides to give up his queen for the two rooks over here. And it's just kind of a good idea to do because you're giving up 9 points of material and getting 10 points of material in return, right? Also, two strong rooks will be off the board. So he goes for queen takes rook, rook takes queen, rook takes rook. Since it's a check, king moved to g7. Karpov now attacks Magnus knight. Knight moved to d6, double attacking the knight over here. And now knight goes back to b2. And since Magnus have a strong pass pawn over here, he decides, let me just start pushing this pawn over here so as to build more pressure on my opponent. 
also karpa's rook is in magnus territory so one rook is just useless is not going to do anything to stop the promotion of this pawn so he decides to play the bold d3 the pawn is becoming dangerous so it's necessary to stop this pawn so karpa plays rook to d1 in order to block the path of his pawn queen to e7 by magnus the idea is to get to the other side of the board and invade into karpov's territory to help the promotion of this pawn but looks like this pawn is hanging because two pieces are attacking and only one piece is defending it and since the players were playing in a blitz format they didn't have much time on the clock to do a precise calculation so karpov here thought let me just get rid of this monster so he played knight takes d3 but guess what no doubt he killed the monster but he landed up in a completely losing position how well magnus now played queen to c7 getting to the other side of the board attacking the rook while also preparing to enter white territory over here the rook moved to the corner and now queen to c2 it's a fork attack also note white's knight is under double attack how can karpov save this position he will now lose tremendous amount of material and with this active set of pieces on the board and the rooks totally discoordinated and the bishop stuck behind its own pawn chain this is going to be a very smooth and easy win for magnus carlson so therefore at this point of time karpo resigned from the game like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed watching this video and now it's time for the question of the day so black here is up in material by a whooping 8 points also he's threatening to get a queen on the board right in the next move and a third queen is coming in another two moves how can white save his game can you find the winning moves for white over here let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video